Hey everyone, Kieran King here. When you think of hedge funds, you usually think of big companies rolling in cash. And to an extent, they do sometimes make a lot of money. How? Well, it is usually due to the lucrative fees involved when investing other people's money. Today, we're going to be looking at the theory of 2 and 20, a typical fee arrangement that hedge funds use. The 2 means 2% of the AUM or assets under management, and the 20 means a 20% performance fee on any profits generated over and above a set hurdle rate. We're going to look at an example of an open-ended hedge fund. I'll go into the meaning of open-ended and closed-ended funds in other videos, but for now, let's keep it simple. Let's say a hedge fund over here raises 100 million in capital to invest from investors, such as institutions, family wealth offices, and even private investors. The fund states their fees as being a 2 in 20 arrangement with a hurdle rate of 5% and a high watermark. We'll go into what these mean in a bit, but just remember these for now. So the fund takes that money in and finds a bunch of financial products to invest that money into, be it equities, bonds, derivatives, whatever. Their sort of investment focus or theme will be stated in their or should be stated in their memorandum or brochure. So let's now go through a three year example on the growth of this fund and see what happens. In year zero, which is now, 100 million is the value of the fund, okay? So let's say at the end of year one, the fund does well and achieves a 20% return. So the original 100 million is now worth 120 million. In year two, the fund doesn't do so well and this actually drops in value and the 120 million is now worth 110 million. And then in year three, the fund turns itself around and makes another 20% return, leaving the value of the assets at 132 million. So let's look at the first year and the two in the two and 20 arrangement. The two, as I said before, refers to the 2% AUM or asset under management fees. At the end of year one, the investor would pay fees to the fund of, of about 2.4 million. This usually is deducted month on month, so technically it might be lower than this, but for now, let's keep things simple. So 2% is a fee of 2.4 million, already off the bat, straight to the fund. Now the 20 represents the 20% performance fee charged on any profits generated. However, remember we said before that there was a hurdle rate of 5% involved. This means that 20% is only charged on profits above the 5% hurdle rate. So in this instance, the hurdle that needs to be achieved before any performance fees are deducted is 105 million, 5% above 100 million, the invested value. As the value of the fund is now 120 million, this means that it is 15 million above the hurdle rate. So the fees would be 20% of 15 million which is 3 million. These fees can be left in the fund or taken out depending on what the hedge fund wants to do. Usually the 2% fee is paid out in order to pay its employees, office space, and generally keeping the lights on. And the incentive fees remain within the fund, but it's entirely their choice. So in year one, the total fees paid to the fund management company would be 3 million plus 2.4 million, which is 5.4 million. This leaves the original investors with a value of 114.6 million pounds, a 14.6% increase from their original 100 million pound investment. I hope that makes sense. So let's move on to year two. We said that the fund's value decreases now in year two to 110 million. The management fee is still 2%, but this time it only comes to 2.2 million. The hurdle rate remains 5% above the previous value of 120 million, which comes to 126 million. But as this is not being achieved this time, the hedge fund managers don't receive anything in terms of an incentive fee. All the managers receive this time round is the 2.2 million management fee. This leaves the net value of the investment at now 107.8 million. Okay, 110 million minus 2.2. Let's move on to year three. In this example, the fund increases in value to 132 million pounds. The 2% annual fee is now 2.64 million, and the hurdle rate required is 5% on top of the previous value of 110, so 115.5 million. And the profit left after the hurdle rate is 16.5 million. So this means that the 20% incentive fee or performance fee is 20% of 16.5 million, which comes to 3.3 million. So in total, the fund collects fees of 3.3 million plus 2.64 million, which is 5.94 million, leaving the net value at 126.06 million pounds. Now, another thing we talked about in the structure was something called a high watermark. 
Now we're going to look at why this is sometimes applied. As you can see in this example, although in year two there was a loss, the hurdle rate still applied on the total gain from year two to three, which may seem unfair. As a result, the hedge fund has put in place a high watermark, meaning that the incentive fees are only charged if the fund reaches a level higher than its highest level before. So let's explain. In this example, the incentive fee in year three will be charged on profits made between 120 million and 132 million, not between 115.5 million and 132 million. So 20% of the 12 million, which is the difference between 132 and 120 million, which was the previous high water rate, is 2.4 million leaving the net value slightly higher than if there wasn't a high watermark involved. I hope this makes sense. <laughs> now it's important to note that in this example we're talking about traditional open-ended hedge fund which is able to do two things. One, calculate at regular intervals the net asset value or NAV of the fund so we know what it's worth at any given point. And two, it allows its investors to withdraw or put more money in at regular intervals. Now this differs to how a 2 and 20 structure would work in a private equity fund where the NAV or the, or the net asset value is not easy to work out and investors are tied up for a certain length of time or investment period. Also, just note that this is more of an example rather than a rule and hedge funds really do whatever they like and you'll have lots of variations of this but this is just a typical standard um, 2 and 20 structure that I've gone through. Now, it is a classic charging structure that in the past has made hedge funds collect some very high fees for their work. However, in recent years, it has faced a little bit of backlash due to hedge funds not really performing as well as expected, proving an, an injustification, if you like, for the high fees. Some critics say that the non-performance related 2% management fee, for example, incentivizes hedge funds to take on more risk than they should and essentially make more mistakes. Anyhow, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. As always, it is a pleasure making videos like this one for you to watch. If you enjoyed this content, please do subscribe to my channel and be sure to check out my other videos. Take care, everyone. I'll see you all soon.